In this video for iMarketsLive.com, we are going to be discussing identifying patterns using the MACD. Video 1. Okay, in our prior videos, prior video we showed how to set up your charts with the MetaTrader 4. And we discussed that you can take a new chart, for instance, left click on your mouse, drop and you could change your chart like that or you could set up a new chart so we're going to drop and drag drag and drop or you could right click chart window sets up a new chart and then we show you how to make a template in your prior video load template here was the one we used as an example and poof, like poof the magic dragon. You have your, your chart set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that chart. And in this particular video, I want to discuss the oscillator, the indicator, the MACD. So let's get some ground rules here. What do we have on the chart? The first thing we want to look at is the moving average. That's that yellow line that we have as you can see here it squiggles down. That's a moving average. It's a 20 period what we call a 20 EMA, a 20 period exponential moving average. Now on the lower left hand corner you'll see MACD and that's moving average convergence divergence. The settings are 3, 10, and 16. And if you just please refer back to the prior video of how to set up your metaphor pa uh, chart pages, it will give you all the information on how to do that. Now, what you see here on the MACD is two things. You see a dotted line, and then you see the histogram. The histogram looks like this. Right? And then the dotted line looks like that. Okay, so you have to look at the histogram as if it was a line. What do I mean? Well, let's just take and we do this. And we outline what this histogram has done. See on several platforms you can add an additional line where on MetaTrader 4 it gives it a histogram but if you look at it it has an outline, right? And as the out here's your outline. So that's what it looks like. So what does it mean to us? Well, a couple of things. We want to learn a couple of things about the histogram. So number one, in a trending market, whereas we have this market right here was trending at earlier, and we saw that every time the histogram pulled back, the market found support. So we know in a trending market that the histogram will correct down along with price and will set up a support. So let's just take this one uh, scenario right here. Let's just take this whole area and how would we use the histogram? So we have the histogram, which is the fast line, that's the 3, the 310, and then the 16 is this dotted line. Okay, that's the slow line, and there's reasons for that. And you see that right there. So every time the market rallied up, and let me try to do a different color, we'll do, uh, we'll do red, if I could find red. 
Okay. So the market ran up, did a pullback, and you could see the histogram did the same thing. And the histogram is essentially a crutch. It's a crutch. It's a crutch for you to see when the price moves back just enough where support can come in. And what is important is we watch this 20 period exponential moving average as a moving average support or resistance. And what do I mean by support and resistance? Now we drew this out a, a few times. And what does support and resistance mean? Support and resistance. Well, let's just take a person and I'm not going to do like we did yesterday because we had a funny funny picture. And the person is standing right in his room and he has a ball to play with. And he takes the ball and he throws it down on the ground. The ball is going to bounce up. This would be considered support. Just like you would in a house where you have support joists or, or support beams. And resistance would be the ceiling. So if you were in your house or office and you threw the ball at the ceiling, what would happen? It would bounce off. It found resistance. So resistance is above, support is below. So we now establish what support and resistance is for those who may not know when I say we have a moving average support and resistance. So if we look at it typically on price charts and on a price chart you get support after you have two areas in technical analysis after you have two data points that test test again and turn down and that ends up being resistance so whether you're at a low or a high you have support after you got a double test and prices held or prices found resistance above that's how you use that now when the market had dropped down and turned back up here was the resistance for prices to stay below so if you were to short the market your risk would go here and you would look for a play lower now in this case where support was the market held its double test rallied had its first pullback and you would be looking for support or for prices to hold and not come back down here so what is support support is where you got two tests or maybe just one test area to watch in a range but basically double test really gives you that confirmation that there is very good resistance or support so how do we use this in, in, in a moving average, in a MACD and a moving average? So they work together. So the moving average works together with the MACD. And we also look at it in conjunction with uh, risk is a stop loss. Yes, MB. Okay, so, so you guys know when I say risk, that would be your, uh, and that, that was a B. All right, stop loss is equal to risk. So if I say your risk is at 157880, it's the same as stop loss. It's the same verbiage. Okay? Thank you, MB, for helping me on that. Appreciate that. So now you have a trending market. It's going up. It's pulling down. Going up, pulling down. And if you notice that this moving average, which is a 20 period moving average it works as a moving support line you see and then as prices shift it becomes a moving resistance line you see until support has come in and price is shifted and now it becomes a moving support line so that's how moving averages work. It's the moving average of the past so many bars. And taking those past so many bars, it gives you an average of what the price is. So it's taking these 
bars in this area and it's calculating and giving you a price of where that average should be for the past 20 bars. So now you know what support and resistance means. Now you know what support and resistance means using a moving average. And you know what a moving average is. So if we start looking at this further, in a trading perspective, we also want to look at what does the moving average convergence divergence or what we call uh, the oscillator or the MACD, it's commonly known. And so you all know that everybody has their own version of the MACD and what the variables are. I'm going to use this and I'm uh, just basically been using it for many years. So what, what the crutch is with the MACD, do we need it? No. Do we need the moving average? No. What's the best indicator? Okay. What's the best indicator? The best indicator is price. First and foremost, it's price. And what is price? Price is these bars. Okay. That's the best indicator. This right here, this is a pattern. And I'll discuss that in a few minutes. And we have discussed it in the past. Remember we discussed the bull flag and the bear flag? Okay. That in itself is an indicator. There's an indicator when you look at different currencies. For instance, let's just say one currency does this. It makes a higher high and another currency is doing the same thing and makes a lower high and is turning down. So looking at these two currencies where one is doing something different than the other one where there's loss of upside momentum where this one is strong but this one is weaker that's up in itself an indicator of what we call a divergence. Okay and and Victor, yes, I spent my money. I didn't take the art classes. So basically, this is price divergence, and this is an oscillator or an or MACD divergence. When we get us, when when I speak about this, so there's multiple types of divergence. The best indicator is price. And also that when price is strong and they pull back, strong and they pull back in other markets, we see maybe a shallow market in, in one currency and a deeper retracement in one currency. The fact that the other currencies are very strong, this supports the fact that this can set up a buy because it, we look at other currencies. So there, it can be used in many ways. So price is the best indicator. So if somebody says to you, well, what indicator do you like the best? What's the best indicator? And you say what? Price. Can I see price in the... Can you put price in, into the live trading room, please? So we're all... What's the best indicator? Are we all on the same page? Okay. What, one person knows this? Come on. All right. Price, price, price. That's the best indicator. Let's start with that. So let's... Now, once we, everybody knows what price is, see that? Look at that. So, what we're doing, all right. So, what we're doing, number one, is what? We look at price and price patterns. Number two, we look at an indicator to support the price pattern. See, many people get into the markets and they look only at the indicator. They don't look at the price. And they wonder why 95% of them don't make it and they fail. So if you're looking at price first and then the indicator, then you're a good trader. If you go in and you start looking at the indicator only and not at price or the pattern, then you're not so smart of a trader. And I will fight anybody to the last breath about that because price patterns are the are the primary thing to pay attention to. So, let's break it down even further. So, as we see, the market was trending up 
and pulling back in price. And what do you have? A little bull flag, right? And if you look at the MACD, it pulled back on the fast line while the slow line was kind of rising. So it's showing that trend up. But that fast line is correcting down. And it corrected down with price into the moving average. So you have a retracement to the moving average. You have a price pattern of that bullish flag. And then you had the MACD. I'll put an A somewhere in there. So now, these little minor uh, retracements on the way up, doesn't matter if you traded them or not. Now we get to the final, this final move up, this big giant price move. And now you got a price pullback. And where did you pull back to? You pulled back to the moving average. And your oscillator pulled back. And what is the pattern that we've all been learning? We've got that flag pattern. You see that? That flag pattern. Let me draw it out one more time. And I'm going to keep drawing until you guys get it. So we have the flag pattern. That's what we call a continuation pattern. All right? Even though this... this okay, we're going to just say it looks like that. And the goal for that is to go higher. So number one, we have a flag pattern. Number two, we have that moving average right here. So that's moving average support. And then also, what do we have? We have our histogram. And you can see it comes down like this. So if you take a look at this picture and this picture, we have three things working. We have the bull flag pattern, moving average support, and the histogram. They all pull back together. They find a common area of support. And that sets up a buy on that particular chart. right there so give me a yes if you understand so far and I've made it so easy to understand that 99 percent of the people that come into the markets do not get it I've never taught like this to expert traders because these guys in the past 14 years I'm speaking to hedge fund traders I'm speaking to major players so if I'm to get out and do this it's hard so this is stuff that I do on a personal basis to little groups but now we're taking this on a global basis. I'm going to help you help yourself and help you help others build your network marketing business because you're going to be smart enough to show them that you could speak the language, you understand it, and you could teach others. Remember, you're going to be able to teach others what we're doing. You're not only going to rely on Chris. You're going to be able to sit back and say, let me show you something on a chart that if you would have bought the market, at 15.04905 and it went all the way up here. You made 100 pips. That the market moved 100 pips. And what's 100 pips? $1,000. Okay, if you traded this time frame and you caught 100 pips, you made $1,000. You see, when you speak to others now, you could speak with confidence. All right, you can speak with confidence because now you understand what I'm understanding. All right, so let's take this a little further. So now what do we do? I want to go over this one more time. I told you what I was going to teach you. I taught you. Now I'm going to now I'm going to tell you what we taught what we talked about. So you you have your uptrend, and what's an uptrend? An uptrend is is higher highs, higher lows. See this. Every high price makes a higher high, and every low, it's higher than the prior low. I've had conversations with somebody, people about Elliott Wave and this wave. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know if a price goes here, and this way, and that way. That's theory, and you know what? Here, take that theory. Real chart work, 
Every day is a different dance. If theory worked so perfectly, everybody would do it. Do you understand? The markets are hard. I'm making it simple for you. Simple. All right? That way, when you see people out there promoting Forex this percent a day, that percent a day, they're not trading. You're going to trade. You're going to create wealth. All right? So, the pullback, the retracement in a trend is what traders like to see. Remember what we discussed in our prior talk that we did. And you can look up what's called the Dow Theory. Do a search on this. It's called Dow Theory. Dow, matter of fact, if you type it in with my name, I think you can find it on the internet. I was in a book. Um, I was put into a book. I wrote an article on Dow Theory in 2002 and was put into a book. Okay, the Dow Theory states, and this is the basis for all technical analysis, that traders look at these waves, these secondary waves, these secondary corrections, these pullbacks, that's what we focus on to trade. We focus on these pullbacks to trade a trend. And right here, it's the same thing. This is called a pullback or a secondary, way, uh, secondary um, trend. Either or, it's a dip. And what do dips usually do? Dips don't trade, right? Because they're dips. But in dips in theory and trading, when I meant dip, you, you know what I mean. So, what did what <laughs> what do dips do? We look to buy the support to try to catch that next wave, that next swing. All right. So that's one way of looking at trading using the MACD, using the moving average, and using price. So when I when I teach on the MACD, it has to be in context of what we're really looking at. You can't just say, teach the MACD and forget to teach your price. You follow? So there's a second way to look at things. And it's called the divergence. And what does that mean? It means that when price has made a low and the oscillator has made a low and price goes up, and price goes up and then price comes down again and so does the oscillator and price makes a low and so does the oscillator but the oscillator makes a higher low you can see here so price does this and this and your oscillator does this so what is that saying to you? that's diverging that means here converging it means this. Diverging means that. Okay? So converging is that. Diverging is that. It means that one vehicle is going one way, one instrument's going the other way. Converging means they're coming into each other. So if you see here, we have a divergence, which means that price is going lower, and the oscillator is making a higher low. So what is that saying to you that the price is stopping going down? It can actually either be a buy to enter or an exit from a short trade. So let's just say you took a short trade here. You got the bounce. Price is bounced, yeah, right? You're working with that retracement of the bounce of the move down, right? Like we discussed. And then prices go down again but your MACD only goes half the way and what's that saying to you that they're losing momentum on the downside you're losing momentum to keep an eye on the indicated divergence the MACD divergence that's the same as if this was doing this and maybe the which is the British British pound and maybe the Australian dollar did this. See, that would be a price divergence where one made a lower low and one made a higher low. In this case, it's an oscillator divergence where the oscillator made a higher low to price making a lower low. Alright? 
So then let's take this further and now take it to the recent the recent market. The market sold off. How to bounce? Sold off. How to bounce? You had a retracement in a trend. That was a short. Okay, remember also this is a four hour chart, so each bar is four hours. And then price sold off. But your indicator made a higher low. So that's saying to you that there's a loss of momentum and to be aware. So if you were a short seller, which means you want the price to go down, you want to buy to cover or just close the trade. It's the same thing. So you would sell first and buy and close. So or you would go you would buy to go long which means you wanted the price to go higher and when it went up you would then sell to exit or once again close the trade so now you identify what is a convergence divergence what is an MACD this and it confirms price that's all you're doing. You're using it to confirm what's already on the chart. Price. So when you have a divergence also, and you get this type of shift up, your last swing up, that rally was extremely strong compared to that prior swing down, which was this. So now you're getting this price bar overlap. And what is that telling you? It's telling you that the market is holding and wants to go higher. You see? Okay, this hasn't this hasn't even started correcting yet. It's not even allowing it to correct. It's so strong. Price is your best indicator. But you confirm everything with your MACD. So the first thing we watch is price. Then you watch your moving average and your and your MACD. And that, my friends, my family, my my buddies, everybody who's in the room with us, everybody say hello and uh, put you on the video. And uh, that's it. All right. So that's a lesson. We did it. It took 30 minutes. Rock and roll.